I have annihilation and usually I have really strong feelings about movies, you know, like immediately after I'm like, yeah, I really like this or I didn't or I, you know, I, I have a pretty clear picture and it has been weeks since I've seen this movie and I'm still not sure if I like it or enjoyed it. It's very bizarre, but I didn't dislike it either. So it's, it's, I'm in a very <laughs> weird space and okay. I think that's kind of the point of it. So I'm like, okay, well, mission accomplished in that sense. It's based on a novel of the same name by an author named Jeff Vandermeer and the novel is a part of a trilogy. And when I, I've read the, I'd read the books before I knew they were making it a movie. And when I read it, I was like, you can't make this into a movie. Like, it's very weird. It's written in this first-person perspective that's very, like, unreliable narrator. It's about this sort of weird sci-fi-ish event that happens in the U.S. And there's, like, this area of pristine wilderness they call Area X that, you know, used to be, like, a populated area. And so it's it's about a team of scientists that go in and, like, the people who... There have been multiple teams of scientists that go in and and, like, exploring what this is. And the first book, Annihilation, is one of the people who went into the area. And it's like her, it's her account. And the area is obviously very crazy and like weird things happen. And this is and Natalie Portman, right? This is Natalie Portman's okay. character. So I also have to call out that in the book, like the first book, they don't say anything about who, what they look like or, you know, you, don't, you only hear her perspective, right? It's just her accounting. The second book... They describe her very clearly as having strong Asian heritage on one side of the family. Which for me, I've talked about this so many times. This is my big thing. I get so upset because I'm like, this is a strong female-led film. And it's not about them being women. It's just like the constraints of the experiment or like uh, exploration that they're in is like they're going to send in a team of women scientists on this go around. I was like, okay, this is an amazing opportunity for, to have an Asian lead in a, like in a movie about women. Oh, my God. No, didn't happen. And the this excuse or like reasoning is they said, oh, well, it's not described until the second book, and the second book wasn't out when he started writing the movie. Which I'm like, this is thin. That's a thin reasoning because the second book came out three months <laughs> after. Like, usually sequels <laughs> take a long time. Yeah. And it came out three months, and then the third book came out three months after that. And like, it's Natalie Portman, Jennifer Jason Lee, Gina Rodriguez, Tessa Thompson, and Oscar Isaac, and Benedict Wong, uh, who's in for like two seconds, so we get one Asian for a few minutes. But Jennifer Jason Lee's character is supposed to be Native American. What? So it's, right, right. So it's just like, Ugh, like, come on. Like, yeah, and I know Hollywood moves fast when it wants to, but are you really telling me that you were so far along in the process that, like, once this information came out that you couldn't reevaluate it? And I mean, I get it. Natalie Portman's a great actress. I'm not knocking Natalie Portman. It's just really upsetting to me that, like, these roles should have been these things. Yeah. And, and they have Tessa Thompson and Gina Rodriguez. So it's not like they didn't have people of color in this film. So why ignore the other two kind of key people? Do you think they do it just to piss you off? I think sometimes, <laughs> I, yes. Clearly, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> just to pitch the billion <laughs> Asian people out there. Uh-huh. Billion plus. There's more than a billion. There's a billion in China. Oh, yeah, anyway. yeah. So, so is it entertaining at all? It's, I don't know if it's entertaining. It's much creepier than the book was. Like, I'll give it that. It's it's still creepy sci-fi, like horror-y, like, you know, existential, very existential at the end. Like, and to, this is the other thing. To call it an adaptation is probably generously using the word adaptation because I think he maybe used like 30% of the book. Well, like, that's why he didn't uh, do right, the characters and, and I was like, correctly. If you had said that, maybe I'd accept that. But saying like, oh, well, the move, the, you know, the second book wasn't out three months later t- takes more than three months to make a film friends like I, you know that so anyway that, that that also kind of you know because i'd read the book going into it i had that kind of frustration and i also was comparing it to the book the whole time and yeah. it's very different from the book by the, the last third i was just like what is happening right here like i don't know what's happening it had nothing to do with the first book also just as a viewer like even if you're just being a viewer it's very bizarre so this is a very kind of intellectual sci-fi film mm. it also very much like prevents the other two books from happening so we're definitely not going to see sequels at least from like this cast if you're squeamish it's got stuff that's going to freak you out uh you know it's 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 got a lot of genres in it and i think it's like it's well done i will give it that right it's it's artistically well done it's technically well done it's just very bizarre and i still don't know if I, I don't think I liked it, but I didn't dislike it. Okay. But, I, I, but I've been thinking about it a lot, but I also know I've been thinking about it because of all the other factors involved. Sure. So I think if you want a challenge this weekend, it's yeah. definitely worth considering. Okay, um, Or go. wait a couple months and it's going to be on Netflix. So, so again, this is Annihilation, Annihilation with Natalie Portman. With Natalie Portman. And again, it's like Tessa Thompson, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, Gina Rodriguez, Oscar Isaac, and the director's Alex Garland. And he made, if you liked Ex Machina, which he made oh, a couple yeah. years ago, you know, it's it's... Not the same as that, but it's if uh-huh. like if that appealed to you, then this yeah. might be in the same vein. But if Ooh. you're a book reader, just know oh. that it is it is not the book it's so, at all. So what are you giving it? I'm gonna give it three point six. Okay, all right, three point six out of five Mohawks for Annihilation. 
there you go. Decide for yourself if you're going to see it or not. And you have another movie, right? I do. Apparently, it's a uh, book week uh, at the movies this week. Uh, so I have a book call- or a movie called Every Day. It's based on a young adult novel of the same name, which was written by David Levithan, who also wrote the novel uh, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which they made into oh, a movie yeah. that I really liked. And so this is like ad- uh, Annihilation is not a faithful adaptation in any way, shape, or form. I felt this was a very faithful adaptation of this book, and it's an interesting book. It's about a we'll call it like a spirit or a creature or a soul, a person who calls themselves A, mm-hmm. and they wake up every day in a different body. Oh, mm. I've seen the preview yes. for this. And it I looks was, cool. It was cool. And I was like, this if this was dark, this would be a Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Or it's Quantum Leap. It's basically Quantum oh, Leap. I loved Quantum um, Leap. But uh, so they, you know, they suddenly like they wake up every day and they age, but so that now they're like sixteen. This creature's like sixteen, so they always inhabit the body of somebody who's their age. So they are, they're in all these teenagers, and they meet a girl and they start develop a crush. Um, and her name's like Rhiannon, and it's played by she's played by Angry Rice, who was in The Good Guys. She was the daughter in that. I thought she was really she was like one of the best parts of that movie. And so she's grown up a little bit, and she's she's very good in this. Cool. And then. The character of A is played by a bunch of teenagers because every day it's a different person. I was like, oh, actually, they're doing a pretty good job of sort of maintaining some sort of consistency across all these characters, which is challenging as a young actor, I I assume. And I I have to say, I really liked the way this movie uh, handled sexuality, biology, mental illness, race, and gender identity. I was like, that's a lot to cover Mm -hmm. in a movie for young adults or adults even but it's a lot to cover because it's very woke as the kids say because you know this person wakes up and he's he has access to the not he they because they they, they at the one point this is i think the best line of the movie is like oh so they they ask a are you a he or a she and they just go yes <laughs> I was like, yes that's great um so they when they wake up you know they know what the person feels about themselves so even if they wake up in the body of someone who was born female but identifies male they're like okay my pronoun today is he and I was like, that's very accepting. I really appreciate the progressiveness of that. Like, th- I think that's great. I think it's just such a simple, like, why are we questioning this? There's not this whole explanatory scene about, like, well, oh, my God, I have boobs, but I f- identify as he. Oh, God. You know, it's just like, this is what it is. I was yep. like, that's great. I think that's wonderful. And it's well handled. You know, teen movies are not usually my type of movie, I, like, because I think they get really cheesy really quickly because it's, like, mm-hmm. the drama of being a teenager and just, like, PTSD or whatever from it. But I thought this was actually a sweet movie. It gets a little melodramatic at points, but, like, that's the point of these things. I think it's going to get dated kind of quickly because a lot of it depends on, like, Instagram and, like, oh, we're going to send messages on Instagram and, like, do this with Siri and all that stuff. And I was like, in five years, nobody will know what this is. But that's okay. Um, but I think... I think it's worth checking out, actually. Like, if this is the type of movie you like, like, I think it's a really well-done version of that. It doesn't get too cheesy. It gets a little cheesy. But it doesn't get too cheesy. (laughs) And at the end, I was like, okay, the conceit is interesting. And actually, I kept asking all these, like, because I'm a sci-fi nerd, I was like, well... Have they been this way since birth? Do they remember? Like, how do you re- how do you keep track of these things? How do you, you know, like, are there other people like that? And then the author is writing a second book. And I was like, I kind of want to read that because it explores, like, all those things. So I was like, ooh, this is a weird, like, sci-fi nerdy bit. So it's it's a little bit of sci-fi for your, you know, young adult genre. So um, I'm going to give it 3.6. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. It looks great. I'm going to see it for sure. Again, it's called Every, Every Day. Day.